Ender Lilies, my fair review. And another Metroidvania, proper Metroidvania this time. Not Souls-like Metroidvania, platforming Metroidvania. It's a bit of everything with main focus on backtracking and multiple endings. True Metroidvania is what Ender Lilies is. So let's go to sections and rate Ender Lilies properly as it deserves. First section is the story. Even though you play as a little girl that's destroying monsters, story goes far deeper than that. Without spoiling much, you're there to cleanse the blight and save the world. Cliché story, but its presentation is more than good. Amazing amount of cinematics throughout the entire game too. Story is everywhere, in cinematics, notes, papers, letters, item inscriptions and of course during the actual gameplay. You are piecing a puzzle here, bit by bit, until you figure out what's going on in the world around you and why you woke up as a little priestess. 9 out of 10 for the story. Next section is game bugs and optimization. Mega fast loading screens, no bugs, not a single crash, no glitches, no stutters. Perfection in other words, 10 out of 10. Next section is game time. In my opinion, even with New Game Plus and all of those bus modes, it still has zero replay value if we exclude speedruns. It took me exactly 17 hours to beat the entire game with 35 out of 38 achievements done, where those three missing ones are just fetching some of the remaining currency in the game. So I can say I nearly 100%ed the game in only 17 hours. It's not short, it's not long Metroidvania for sure, but for 9 bucks it's more than worth it. 8 out of 10 for game time. Next section is game difficulty. This is not a hard Metroidvania, it's on a scale between normal and hard difficulty. Platforming is the second thing beyond combat and AI is more than okay. I died, not that often, but I did, it like some challenge, but there is always a new game plus for that, so 9 out of 10 for game difficulty. Next section is maps and graphics. A lot of different maps, from classic ruined villages, castles and dungeons, to catacombs and the abyss itself. They didn't cover all colors, but the game is just dark and full of terrors and I like it like that. Graphics are more than good, art style is great, backgrounds are solid too, although it might be one of the weaker parts of the game. The game is morbid enough, I guess. UI is straight phenomenal, including stats, cutscenes, relics and main world map. I didn't like the design of a minimap, but it makes sense since the world is not big enough for devs to hide items behind blue and yellow colors. So, 8 out of 10 for maps and graphics. Next section is gameplay. It's a classic metroidvania with dash, double jump, double dash, dodge, hit, backtrack, a lot of backtracking in this one by the way, especially if you wanna see all endings. It has a mega slow start in the first two hours, so if you hold on without uninstalling it, it will get better and better as you make progress. Slow start is just a killer in this one. From the start, Ender Lilies will lock every single area around you, sending you on a linear path in the first 10 hours. After that, you can start backtracking. Every boss you kill will give you new abilities so you can unlock and pass through most of the areas that you were not able to do in the first 10 hours. It's fun, what can I say? It is, is it groundbreaking now? No, it's not, but it was more than okay while it lasted, so... 8 out of 10 for gameplay. Next section is leveling and itemization, so let's see. It copies from other metroidvanias and it does it well. Relics are copied from Hollow Knight, how many you can equip, how many slots it takes to carry them, raise damage, raise health, raise healing, deal more damage in water, deal more aerial damage, acquire more experience to level up faster, and so on. Spells you learn from the bosses are actual items in this game, or better to say they're ghosts that will have different attacks. Hammer, flail, spear, and so on. 
During Rest Pets, you'll be able to use two different types of Blight to enhance and boost damage on the abilities you like the most. Plenty, and when I say plenty, I mean at least 20 different melee and range type of attacks are available to equip. Six is the limit that you can change on whim during respites, by the way. It ain't innovative, but it offers a lot of different options to play with and to enjoy the game as you see fit, so that's why I'm gonna give it 9 out of 10 here. Next section is NPCs and enemies. Plenty of NPCs in a game, most of them are dead, and one main NPC that will follow Lily till her last breath. Immersion is there for sure, very cool idea behind ghosts around Lily. Enemies, all kinds of monstrosities and abominations, as well as blighted undead, corrupted knights, soldiers, and so on. All enemies come in melee and ranged forms. Ender Lilith has a lot of mini bosses and around 10 or so main bosses. Mini bosses are simple to recognize, they don't have second or a third phase, while main bosses always have second or third phase. Mini bosses are just the stronger and faster versions of regular enemies, while main bosses are a sight to behold. Main bosses were never hard or unfair, but for sure you'll need to die a few times to learn their moves and patterns. 9 out of 10 for NPCs and enemies. Next section is music and sound, and that will be the last section. This is by far the worst part of the game. Let's just say that Ender Lilis has 20 cutscenes and not a single one of them is narrated and voice acted. Ender Lilis has tons of in-game conversations, but not a single one is voice acted. Ender Lilis has one million notes, but not a single one of them is voice acted. Music is like living hell that I needed to turn off after 10 hours in the game. It was the same piano tune non-stop from start to finish. Three notes that were smashing my brain as well as all the people that were watching my live stream. After 20 of them said how they will lose their mind if they hear the same sound again, I decided to turn the music down. Worst music I heard in a metroidvania ever. It's brain breaking and it feels like you're in a sanitarium. Three same notes for 17 hours straight is a torture. Sound effects were fine, if nothing else. 3 out of 10 for music and sound. Uh, Ender Lilis failed hard in this section, and I'm even polite here, because it's such a good game. Frankly, it deserves 1 out of 10. Final verdict. We got 9 sections with 73 points, and that would be 8.1 out of 10 for Ender Lilies. What can I say about the game? Let's see. It was fun while it lasted, because if it lasted longer than 17 hours, the score would go down for sure. Ender Lilis had phenomenal idea behind abilities, main protagonist, world, combat, and it ruined it with lack of voice acting, atrocious music, weak backgrounds, and forced backtracking for silly blighted currency that's not even needed in a game so much. Backtracking should be there for things that matter, not for a hundred blighted souls that do nothing but waste your time. If something is good out of all of it, people seem to love the game and that means it sold well, so we can see an even better metroidvania from these developers in the future. I believe they can do far, far better than this. Ender Lilies is a good metroidvania, very unique metroidvania with brilliant ideas, but execution failed a bit. Just a bit, not much. It's worth every penny and every second of your time if you enjoy Metroidvanias, that's for sure. It's sold well, devs should have solid amount of money, so let's see what they can do with more resources on their next project. P.S. Final thoughts about Ender Lilis. 
If I played Ender Lilies before Eterna Noctis, this score would be way much higher than 8.1, but Eterna spoiled me and ruined my perspective of every other Metroidvania that exists. In comparison, Ender Lilies felt like 15% of Eterna's game time, 5% of Challenge Upper, 50% less immersion, and at least 50% uglier and clunkier and slower. I needed to say this so you guys can realize why is my score a bit lower than usual score for Ender Lilies worldwide. Although when I give 8 and above, I believe it's more than a good game, so that's that. Thanks for watching as always and I'll be seeing you on the next one.